Hi everyone, Vacha here for RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again today. And today we are looking at Studio One Update 3.5 for Studio One Prime, the free DAW, to find out the updates, what new things we have also implemented in Prime. There are lots of additions in version 3.5 of Studio One for the artist and especially the professional version. It's just mind-blowing the new additions, especially being free update. It's really, really great. Some options have been added in there. That means I don't need to use some plugins which I normally use. Like in the professional version, you can find out the loudness level and adjust things accordingly rather than using an external VST. So it's all already included. But today we are looking in Studio One Prime. I'm going to open up a project and we're going to see what things are in there. But before I open my latest project, let's have a look some of the new configuration in the audio device. This is something new. I'm running Windows 10 on my laptop. On a MacBook, it's slightly different, which is uh, I cannot show you here, but it definitely is there is that you are able to select the audio device, different audio device for input and recording, and different audio device for playback. So let's say if you're running on your MacBook, you can connect your audio interface and record through the microphone or through the interface, whatever you want to record. But for the playback, you can select your laptop speaker or your MacBook speaker or some other device that you might have which is really great. That means you've got different input and different output audio device to select, which is really good. But for Windows, you, you're still limited to one audio device for recording and playback. Now, for this, uh, my laptop, I have never selected my block size down to 64 samples. And I'm using my M-Audio Fast Track Ultra, uh, which is connected there. And I can bring this down to 64 samples which is latency down to 3.2 milliseconds and round trip of maybe uh, 6 or 7 milliseconds all up. It's just I could never do it. Usually I would have it up to no less than 128 samples. So this is really great news. Now the other thing that uh, we're going to try later on as well, this new tab called Processing. Now here, this allows you to engage the internal low latency engine so that when you have a MIDI keyboard connected and you want to play, let's say, a sound VST instrument, let's say Presence XD, like we have in Prime, whenever you play the keyboard, the MIDI keyboard, you are able to hear the sound as soon as you touch the keys. It's similar to playing like a normal live keyboard or synthesizer. With my laptop, I can go down to 128 samples at low dropout protection and get down to 7 millisecond or nearly 8 millisecond latency. See this Z mark here? The green Z? That's the internal instrument latency. And you can um, use for instruments or you can also use the internal, the hardware latency as well if you wanted to. That is something new. A lot of the times you might want to have it on the medium so that you don't have that many um, dropouts. So you're well protected at 512 samples. So we're going to try and see this round trip of audio 40 milliseconds and 38 milliseconds for instruments, which is the standard. And you can see how it goes down to, you know, just under 8 milliseconds for low latency. So we'll have a quick look at that. So under external devices, uh, I do have my Arturia Minilab connected as the keyboard. Just going to play some sounds through that. So let's open up a project. OK, this is my latest project uh, that I'm working on. It's a song which is in progress. So whereas with the internal low latency, you can see this green Z right here. And we can enable and disable right from here as well. So we don't need to go into the settings. You can enable and disable from here. And we're going to find out what the differences are. It might be a bit hard for me to demonstrate without an external camera. But the whole thing is by the time you press the keys, you touch the keys with your fingers, 
in what you hear on your headphones, you know, that's uh, normally there will be latency. So with this new version 3.5 with low internal latency, so that should actually solve the problem. So let's have a quick listen to what it is and uh, what uh, we can add to this. These are all audio tracks. So there's no MIDI tracks, there's no MIDI instruments here, um, all uh, live music. You might have seen me record these tracks of a real guitar. Turned out okay. Anyway, so uh, you might have seen at the top, I tend to use as I'm progressing into recording, so I know the tracks, as well as if I'm collaborating with any anybody else on this song, I've used the markers to mark the chord changes. You can see there? So I simply added a mark and put my chords in there, so the, the other person who is collaborating with me knows what keys I'm playing, which is very, very helpful. Anyway, so for this, uh, let's add um, piano. Let's try electric piano first. Okay. Now, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to show you what I'm playing, but as soon as I touch it, Now, I can, it's like playing a, a real piano. And by the time, as soon as I touch it, the sound is there. So that's, that's really great. That's something really improved. And you are able to tell, and you can find out, if this instrument is running under internal low latency, is by the green dot here. Normally it'll be on uh, it'll be blue color if it's active. Now they've added the green, meaning it's at with low latency. So this is really great. So I'll be able to play. Cool, cool. So let's see what difference it will make once I actually remove that um, latency. Oh, here we go. That's how we switch it off. Uh, this is for the audio, and this is for the instruments. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely some latency there. I can feel it, you know. Still not that much, but um, it's still there. But as soon as I enable the, um, well, zero latency or very low latency. Yep, definitely. So that's one thing that you should really try out if you uh, upgrade. Try the zero latency and we see if your audio interface does support it. It can go that low and you'll be able to use it. So let's uh, see if we can record something. Okay.
That's close enough. That was really easy to play because there was no latency or anything. And I was able to play it quite um, easily. I think I played one chord wrong, but it doesn't matter. quite low CPU usage as well. As you can see, I'm using quite a lot in here. Latency of four milliseconds, as I mentioned. So that's quite low with the low latency option enabled. And everything else is very, very low latency. Pretty good. Okay, so that's uh, the second thing that um, is available on there. Now, another great and really important feature uh, which everybody asks for, is, uh, as including myself, think of this. So I change this, that, up, down. I go, now, I don't know what it was. Control Z, and I can go back. See my fader? Control Z, and it moves. We have mixer history and undo, which is really great. So if you do accidentally or intentionally change your fader and your, let's say, your uh, panning, you can change it back and it, up it goes. And the history is found under edit history. And you can select back where you want to go. As you can see, I can change it. As you can see, just notice that as well as the screen. So I'm going to go load the preset. I can remove the recording and inserting of the instrument and the panning. So this is fantastic. That means you can go back to any part of the history and recover back again. Now, another thing that uh, was annoying in Studio One Prime, which has now has been fixed. And I'm hoping they heard me and that's why they changed it. As we know, Prime only allows two inputs. So either stereo left, right, or single inputs one and two. So even though your audio interface might support multiple inputs, you are only able to select two of them, one and two. So if I do this, and apply, they disappear because you can only have two of the same channel. So you could have this and it will still work because input one is the same as left. Input two is the same as right, which is all good, but you wouldn't be able to do this. They disappear. But the problem was you could not add any new ones in mono or stereo. You couldn't even remove it actually. So if your setup was different, then you wouldn't be able to add. And one problem I had is if you install Prime on a brand new PC that Studio One have never been installed on, you actually can't have inputs and outputs. It was, it was not there and you could not add it. So finally, in this version, they've added it. Even though you can, you only still allow two inputs at any one time, but the option to be able to have this input set up, so I could actually say, okay, now I want to have my analog input um, four, three and four, so I can remove these ones, apply, and now I can use input seven and eight as my audio interfaces, analog input three and four, so I don't have to plug and unplug things because I've got my keyboard connected to analog inputs three and four and I can record from it. And if I want to record the microphone now, all I got to do is come here. Let's say input one and two. 
And now I have input one and two. For my microphone connected into analog in and analog in two, one and two. So I hope that makes sense. So this is really great that we are now able to add um, into our input array. Output still one, you don't need to add it because you're only allowed one output. So either my output one and two or three and four, five and six, um, seven and eight, which my audio interface supports. Your audio interface might be different, may look different. So, but the, the option of having stereo output is the only one still. But the inputs, you can definitely select them. You're still recording two at a time. Okay, let's have a look. I've got a microphone connected and um, let's see if we can add mic, audio, mono from the left. Yeah, that should be fine. And let's have a listen. There we go. Now, what you're hearing, can you hear that tiny bit of um, reverb sound? That's the latency. Because the microphone you are hearing me now is the microphone connected to my M audio interface. And when I get closer to my other microphone, which my commentary microphone, that's when you actually hear what directly being recorded as well and one being delayed. So this is that's how quick it is with latency. There's hardly any latency. Um, I'd be more than happy to be able to play uh, or sing into the microphone without any latency issues. So I hope this demonstrates uh, the thing as well. So there we go. This is the um, uh, from the other microphone connected. It's just uh, an SM58, uh, nothing fancy. But obviously this microphone is my commentary microphone. It has um, a better voice because I have not adjusted the uh, setting on this microphone. It's just directly coming in. Well, that's it uh, for, for now. This is all I have for the time being. I'm still finding out things. Yeah, hopefully there'll be another video if there's anything else that I discover and find in Studio One Prime. And if you have discovered something in Prime that I haven't covered yet, please do comment below and I'll follow it up as well and include it in my next video for everybody else uh, to learn about it. I hope this was helpful. If it was, give me the thumbs up. And as always, uh, thanks for watching. Have a great time making music. Cheerio.